How are you doing now? Today we're going to make a Bob Marley reggae inspired headband dreadlocks beanie wig hat. Now there is a free downloadable pattern available at AmericanKnitter.com for all sizes infant to adult. And the hat I'll be making in this video is for a toddler. I'll be using a 31 peg nifty knitter loom in this video and you'll need red, yellow, and green yarn as well as a chunky brown yarn. Something that looks like hair is best. And the best yarn that I found for this is Hobby Lobby's Yarn B Tender Touch brand yarn. The color is Sable. It's actually a mix of light and dark colors so it's perfect for dreadlocks so I'll just get something that looks like hair and then let's get started so to start we'll be using the red yarn so tie a slip knot by wrapping the yarn around two fingers and then pulling a strand through the loop secure the slip knot onto the first peg And we'll now wrap each peg counterclockwise as we work in a clockwise direction around the loom. Once every peg is wrapped, you can temporarily tie off the yarn on the side peg. I just wrap the yarn around my finger and then I transfer it onto the peg like this. Then we'll push the yarn down on each peg in order to make room for another row of red yarn. Wrap the loom with the second row of red yarn, and then just push it down as before. So continue wrapping until you have three rows of red yarn on the loom. Now it's time to use the pick tool. You may find it helpful to pick off the last peg first. That way, the working yarn, if it comes off of the side peg, it won't unravel around the whole loom. Use the pick to pull the bottom row of yarn up and over and off each peg so that only two rows of yarn remain on each peg. Then it's time to add another row of yarn. After you've added the fourth row of red and then you've picked, it's time to change colors. So if you're making a different size hat beanie, uh, then be sure to check and see how many rows you should add. It's on the pattern. Uh, but the next color we'll use is yellow. So to change colors, just cut the red yarn, but leave a long enough length to tie on the new color. And continue wrapping and picking with the new color for four more rows. It's likely that the first few pegs that you wrap have the red color uh, wrapped on them instead of the new yellow. And that's okay, just wrap and pick them just the same. So I, I'll use that part of the hat as the back of the hat, just because the stitches will be inconsistent. So with four rows of yellow added to the loom, we're going to change colors again, and this time to green. We'll cut off the yellow and tie the green on, and this time we're actually going to be adding eight rows of green instead of four rows. This is because the portion of the headband will be on the inside as well as the outside. So if this doesn't make sense to you, just do it anyway, and then you'll see later on what I'm talking about. Okay, with eight rows of green added, we'll cut and tie the yellow back on and wrap and pick for four rows. Then we'll finish the headband by adding the red back on for another four rows. So now the headband's finished, so it's time to secure it. To do this, we'll be adding the very first row of yarn back onto the pegs. Bring the red strand up and over each peg all the way around the loom. And it should look like this when you're done. Then we'll pick the bottom strand of yarn up and over each peg and the headband portion of the beanie will be secure. Now 
Now it's time to add the rows of yarn for the hair. So just as in changing colors, cut and tie on the new yarn. So for this size loom, we'll be adding 35 rows of yarn to the beanie. So wrap and pick 35 rows and we'll be ready for the next step. Now at this point, your beanie should look like this and pick off the rows of yarn off the loom so that there's only one row of yarn on each peg. Then leave a length of about 18 inches and cut the yarn. So now we're going to thread a yarn needle onto this strand of yarn. And the easiest way to do this is to take a small strip of paper and fold it over the yarn and then slip the paper into the eye of the yarn needle. With the yarn on the needle, remove the loop of yarn from each peg working all the way around the loom. With the hat off the loom, pull the yarn to cinch the hat closed. And weave the yarn through the top of the hat to secure it. Then cut and tie off the loose end. Now it's time to switch gears and make the dreads. I really recommend investing in an automatic spool loom, and I've added a link in the description where you can buy one. But that being said, if the yarn you chose is too heavy or too bulky, it may not work with the automatic loom. Uh, the yarn I recommended at the beginning does work with uh, the Embellish Knit automatic spool loom. So if you use the manual loom, use the small peg side, wrap and pick just like a normal loom. Don't bother counting rows, just go by length. And when the piece is long enough, remove it from the loom the same way that you did with the, on a larger loom, and then tie it off. To use the automatic loom, feed the yarn through the guide, and down the center hole. On the other side, clip the weight, and this part is necessary for the yarn to feed properly through. Then turn the handle, allowing the first hook to grab the yarn. And then you lift the yarn behind the second hook and allow it to be hooked onto the third hook. Then skip the fourth hook and allow the first hook to catch the loop again. So from this point, continue turning the handle, allowing the yarn to catch on every hook and you may have to give it a tug once in a while from the bottom so that it doesn't bunch up at the top of the tube. The only other thing you want to make sure is that there's no tension on the yarn that is being fed into the loom. Once you're done, you just cut the yarn and let it finish weaving by turning the handle. Then take a yarn needle and secure each loop so it doesn't come untangled, just like you would on the normal spool loom. So continue this until all the pieces in their varying lengths are completed. And also, depending on the size of the beanie, you're going to possibly need more yarn. Uh, for this size beanie, one skein of yarn, the type that I recommended, is enough for this hat. And we need to make lots of locks of different sizes. So repeat this until you have enough dreadlocks to fill up all the parts of your beanie to your liking. And this will vary greatly depending on the size of your hat. Now we're going to secure the dreadlocks onto the beanie. There are a number of ways to do this, so if you have a specific idea in mind, go for it. But this is how I did it. Uh, decide where you want the front of the beanie to be, and at that spot near the top of the beanie, place one of the shorter dreadlocks that won't get in the way of the eyes, but will extend all the way down to the brim or the headband. Um, on this size, four or five dreads should do it to make the space for your eyes. Place them between each stitch. As you place them, secure them with a thread of yarn 
Go through just the tip of the dreadlock and into the stitching of the beanie. On the rest of the beanie, place the long and short dreads alternating between stitches, all about the same height at the top of the hat. Once you do that, you'll be done. Congratulations, you made your very own reggae Bob Marley Rasta beanie wig. Thanks for watching. Please rate and comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, I've got a lot more fun projects of all kinds, mostly on the round knitting loom. But um, hopefully this was enjoyable for you and maybe you learned something new. Thanks for watching.